they've been put on new medications, what are those medicines? What's the updated list? Are they seeing any other specialists? Have they been admitted to the hospital during that time? You want to know all of that. You want to reassess, right, their cognitive function, their, um, their ability to walk safely, uh, evaluate their risk falls. You want to know, has anything else happened in their family? Maybe their daughter developed breast cancer or something like that. You want to know those things. And then you want to give them an updated written screening schedule. Same thing that they walked out with the last time you saw them. <clears throat> this is just updating, same thing, uh, making sure everything is current. All right, so here is the sample form. Just click it on, right? All right, this is the... Is that the... No. Okay, here we go. Yay, I did... All right, so this is um, the uh, Academy of Family Practice um, Puts out, they've worked really hard on developing all kinds of uh, practice tools. And they've got letters that you can, you can uh, download and you can uh, edit so that it becomes yours personally where uh, there's explanations about these kinds of uh, exams and visits. This is the uh, preventive physical exam. It's a great form actually to use for the annual wellness visit. So this first part is, um, all the demographics, as well as uh, who did the initial intake. We'll talk a little bit about how to make um, this effort kind of streamlined. One of the things that you will want to think about is who in your staff can do uh, a lot of this work up front before you even see the patient, okay? So that all of your information is on these forms, in your system, you're set to go. That's going to make things a lot more streamlined. So you want to know who's, who's conducting that initial intake, um, who's asking some of these questions. And then there's the, the social history. And some of these things you'll see, they overlap with the uh, health risk assessment form. Um, but the health risk assessment form can be done by the patient even before they come into your office. So you'll have a lot of information that if you um, organize your staff well, they can, they can um, front load a lot of this information for you. Family history, I love this grid because it's just a check, right? Easy, fast, and then you've got something complete. Hospital visits, um, medication list. The only thing I... I I'm worrying about is this is too small. There are too few areas to put in um, medications, right? Because you need like about five pages for some of our patients. There are so many um, drugs, and plus there are all their supplements and over-the-counter arthritis medicine and stuff like that that they take. You want to know about all of that. So you want a form that gives you plenty of room for you to uh, input that data. There's um, it's funny that the problem list should be this far down this form. Um, it, you know, it, that doesn't quite make sense, right, for practitioners. Why would the problem list be way down here? You could change this. You could make your own form. Uh, you probably will need more lines here as well. Um, but you want to know if there have been any other uh, issues that have come up. So there's an acute uh, problem list here that will tell you if things are happening in this uh, patient's life. Other, other, page, other physicians, you want to update this if this is a subsequent visit. The depression screening. Uh, here's your IADLs and um, gait stability, cognitive function. For the cognitive function, you know, um, you don't have to only get that information from the patient. In fact, you probably shouldn't. 
you probably should be asking caregivers, family members, other people who interact with the patient. And it may be even something like your staff members who know, you know, uh, Mrs. Kaihui, and they say, wow, she's different. She comes in, you know, she doesn't look as, as put together as she normally does or whatever. Everybody who uh, observes this patient can impact it, okay? You want to check their vision and hearing. Um, you know, in the past, there was a requirement for uh, an EKG. That's your call now, okay? And then there's an area here for when you uh, discover a problem that needs um, additional attention by other healthcare providers, that's, this is where it goes. Here's the uh, vaccination record. And then whatever handouts you have that you've given your patient for them to take home to read later and stuff like that. You want a you wanna record of what you've given them. All right, so this, this um, form is that um, form where if you discover, for example, okay, smoking, still smoking, wants to stop, and you want to send them um, somewhere to, uh, to a smoking cessation or maybe weight loss program or something like that, this is the kind of form that you would want to document that on so that they take that home with them. Okay. Make sure that um, all their screenings are up to date, and if not, when they should get their colorectal screening, breast cancer screening, what have you. Oh, I'm too, I'm too, uh, okay, so here are some of the places where you can get uh, patient encounter forms. Um, the American Medical Association, the Family Practice uh, Management, that, that's a really rich site, but, but it requires a subscription. Okay, a little bit about this health risk assessment because that's something that um, CMS has decided that you need to do or the patient needs to have when they go in for, for the uh, annual visit. And the reason is because they really want us to keep track of the chronic diseases, um, the risk for injury um, and health events uh, as well as discovering if there are any urgent needs that the patient may have at the time that they see you. Now, if they do, then again, you have to warn them, warn the patient that that's a, that's a copay, yeah? Okay. Now, this HRA, the patient can do it themselves before they even come in. Some of them are probably going to need a little bit of help, and I would encourage you to have somebody in your office as you're setting up the annual wellness visit to go through the health risk assessment. That way the patient doesn't have to remember, oh, I gotta bring the paper in or what have you, you know. And they you are your staff can help them understand what the questions are all about. Um, that way they're prepared, you've got your information and things are ready to go. Um, so really anybody can do it with the patient. Okay? They want a lot of this stuff to be done over the internet. But reality is, first of all, a lot of our patients don't have access to the internet because they don't know how, right? They don't, they're not comfortable with uh, computers and things like that. But that's our goal. You know, eventually we would like everybody to, to have an electronic way into our offices. So any other ways 
or means um, that you can get the health risk assessment done is fine. Um, okay, we covered anybody can do it, including the patient all by themselves. This health risk assessment, um, I don't know, I guess they thought this was good news, but takes no more than 20 minutes to complete. Oh, yay, 20 minutes, right. That's like a whole visit, right? Okay. So, so again, if you can offload that to a staff member, um, most of our staff members are plenty able to understand what the health risk assessment is all about. And they usually have a really good um, uh, relationship with our patients, so they can get a lot of information. Here are some resources that you can look at regarding the, the health risk assessment and uh, the thinking that went into why CMS thought that this was uh, uh, an important thing to do. But I don't think you're going to find any forms because CMS doesn't sanction any forms. So the forms you've got to go somewhere else for. Okay. Here's a um, uh, form. I'm not going to goof around with a um, computer because I'm what I've asked. Uh, it's, but I got this from Part B News. So if any of you subscribe to Part B News, Medicare Part B News, um, it's a great little form here. And uh, it's checklist type of thing, so easy, easy, easy. I wish we could make copies for you, but this is copyrighted, and so we're not able to do that. Okay? But you could ask HMSA if we would pay for a subscription for you. Okay. So again, same same uh, subscription, same vendors. Yeah, and actually, again, if you have an electronic health record, your vendor might already have some of these forms in there. Okay. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> um, billing and coding facts. Now, you know, uh, we do have a coder in the house. Because okay, thank you. So if you have any any questions about the billing and coding, ask her. Um, I'm not very good at that. Okay. So the thing to under, to remember, this initial annual wellness visit, once in a lifetime benefit, so it's only paid once. Um, and the annual wellness visit, again, to um, to echo what Amy said, it is available to um, your me our members only after they've been enrolled in Part B for 12 months. So the first 12 months is that um, IPPE, that initial patient preventive exam. The next 12 months, the initial annual wellness visit. And every 12 months afterwards, the subsequent annual wellness visit. OK. And those are the um, billing codes. Uh, if, if you bill incorrectly, you won't get paid. So please bill correctly, because I want you guys to get every bloody red cent that you can get. You earn it, you work really hard. Get it, OK? So if you need help, um, we really want to try to understand how we can help you um, to be accurate in the documentation and the coding. Um, the other thing is that, that the elements of these visits um, are prescribed. So really, if you, we, if you get audited and they see that you did not do it correctly, you won't get paid. Um, OK. Told you about this already. Other kind of um, things to remember is that routine physicals are not covered by Medicare. So these. You know, when a patient hears, ooh, I get this annual wellness visit, what they actually hear is, ooh, I get a free physical exam, visit with my doctor. So, you know, and who could blame them, right? Um, just got to really make sure they understand uh, what they're getting and what the costs are. Um, the well, this other thing here, well woman exam and prostate cancer screening, um, this is kind of weird. But if you're going to do it at the time of the annual wellness visit, you have to subtract the Medicare payment and then charge. 